All right, welcome back. We're going to do version 0 0.1. And in this version, we're going to display the game options. We're going to focus on our implementing more of the play.c. And uh, in the play.c for this version, we basically want to display the game options and then prompt for the user's menu choices. So let's give for right now the list of games. So we're going to have a character array. Actually, I say a character pointer, which will be games. And this is going to be an array. So notice the open, close, square brackets say that you're will have an array, in this case an array of strings, and I'm going to go ahead and initialize it. Notice I'm careful to go ahead and put the open and close curly braces. I'm also using a convention that is used by C developers to keep things private within a file, put static in front of this. This means this is has file scope. What I mean that mean by that, the only the only code that can see this thing called games is within this file. The static says hide it. Now, if I didn't put static there, then anybody in the file can access this variable. When you're writing code, you like to hide as much data as you can. So typically always put static in front of my variables inside a file unless they don't need to be static right so this is a this is this file this can be accessed this name games variable can be accessed anywhere in this file but nowhere else now what games are we going to have well we're going to have guess ascii character game That's one, comma. Another one is going to be the guess, the NZ, C, uh, we'll say reserved word, or maybe I call it keyword. Well, we'll say reserved word or keyword, comma. And uh, the last one's going to be needs no introduction, tic tac. So, now I could put as many as I want, right? You can just put, keep putting one after the other. And this is what an array is. An array is more than one. Well, how many? Well, we don't specify how many because you just put list as many as you want to here. Now, if I said, for example, five, I could put five entries here. But by not specifying, it says, well, however many you put be good. Now we said when you start playing what we want to do is prompt the user for their game choice. Of course one of the game choices should be uh, to exit. So I'd say the first thing we want to do is we want to be um, playing this game. And I'm going to do something you sometimes see people do. I'm going to say while wow, one. Now while one, a while loop, will exit if you have anything, well if you have zero, which is false. So if you have false, you exit, but if you have anything other than false, you continue to run. Well, while one means this will do this forever. You're saying, well, that, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, what we're going to do is we want to display the menu of, of game choices of which right now is three, but it could change, right? As we go on, we, we may have more. So what I'm gonna do is say, display uh, menu choices. So we'll do that. And uh, then I, I need to get, get our menu choice. So uh, I'll say, get our menu, choice 
I'll just say get menu choice. And thinking about it, right, I'm, I'm literally showing you how code gets written as I go through here. I'm saying, well, yeah, I just want to display the menu choices. But here, we'll probably have an integer choice that's going to come back from this function. I'm kind of thinking through how I want this to work. And then I'm going to say, if the choice is exactly equal to, and I'm thinking, well, you know what? If the user has, has selected that they want to, to quit, that they want to get out of this, then I want to exit. So I'm going to say if the choice equals to, oh, let's say, uh, how about game exit? So if it equals to that, then I'm going to break out of this loop. Now again, what I'm showing you is literally um, I'm implementing as we're going along, and I'm thinking, well, I want to display the menu, get the menu choice, and do the one of those will be game exit. And so in fact, right here, I'm going to say pound define, or let's say game exit. We can put anything we want. I'll just say minus one. I notice as soon as I put that, that went away. Of course, I've got these two functions. I got the display menu choices. And remember what I said about hiding things? This particular menu choice, which I'm going to copy and paste, right, to keep typos at a minimum, copy, paste, put it right here. I'm going to say this doesn't return anything. And I want to hide this. I only want this function to be visible here. So when it says display menu choices, I'll do whatever it needs to do, right, to display my menu choices. In fact, a good habit to do is just say to do display menu choice choices. All right, that, that tells us we got there. And then here we've we're only down to this one where it says uh get the get the actual menu choice. So I'll paste that here. Again, I want to keep this private to this function. So static or to this file. So static. This returns an int. Get menu choice. And for right now, just for early testing, I'm going to return game exit. Now it's very important as you're watching these videos that you pick up how the code gets implemented and I'm showing you step by step literally uh, how how the code gets created a little bit at a time and as I've encouraged you many times go ahead and run right and we see oh we got our menu choice and shut down and of course we exit but at least we got us a framework right so we've got got some stuff and we can take care of each one. In fact, I'm going to say, well, I think now I'll display my menu choices. So I'll comment that so you'll remember that's how we started. Now, right now we have three of these, but later on I may have four or five or six. So my display menu choices, I would like to be able to basically display as many choices as are in the array. In other words, I need to know how many are here. So here's a trick, and you'll do this a lot in your coding. I'll say integer array size equals to. To find out the array size, that is how many entries, actually maybe I'll even do this to make it clear. Instead of array size, I'll say num array entries how many how many are here well first we give the size of now size of tells you the size of a data structure so in other words a block of data how many bytes does this take up we'll, we'll have the size of games this is an array we're wanting to tell us how many bytes are in this array total? 
And then we're going to divide that the size of games of zero. Okay, let me pause here and explain this a little bit. So games of zero. This is a key skill. You'll do this a lot. If you want to know how many entries are here, take the size of the whole array. Divide it by the size of a single entry. And that'll tell you how many entries. In fact, since we're learning, we'll say printf num array entries percent %d backslash n, right? Because this will be a decimal value. Num array entries. Now when I run this, no surprise, we got three. But suppose I said, oh, red, just for example, green, and blue. All right, we've added three more. Click on run. Now it says I've got five. All right, one, two, three, four. That's actually the number of array entries. I should have six there. Um, should say six, not five. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me run that again, huh? Num array entries is five. Wonder why that is. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm I'm really puzzled about that. However, let's do this. Let's do some debugging and troubleshooting. In fact, as you write code, this will happen a lot where you have to figure out what's going on. Let's say four integer i equals zero. Now, an array, you access each entry by using a um, by using an index. Okay, so we'll say index equals zero gives you this one. And we want to go all the way up till i less than the number of entries. Okay, now this is important an array, this first index is 0, 1, 2, and so forth. So this will tell us the number. We'll keep doing that till we get the number of entries. And i++, plus plus, meaning incrementing each time through. Many times when you're using an array, you'll use a for loop to go through the array. Now remember, there's a bug in this program, and as, as you know by watching these videos, I often put in bugs to give you better experience. And this is a this is a classic. <laughs> you know, I know I know I've got six entries, but it's only showing five. So so by printing them out, this will give us insights. I'll say printf. Let's print out the uh, the menu choice. And then let's print out the value of the string. So we'll say i will be our index, and the string would be games of i. So games of i allows us to access that particular one. Now as soon as we run this, you'll find out where we messed up. And again, it's a common error. So we're looking at this and we say, okay, we got guess this, guess this, tic-tac-toe, what? Tic-tac-toe red? Ah, look at this. I left my comma off. So by not putting the comma here, remember I said earlier in a video, the compiler concatenate strings together. So by leaving out the comma, of course this was an accident, this was a mistake, by leaving it out, it was seeing this and this as, a, as one string, which during our debugging, we saw that was the case. So we'll print out all those. So these are our menu choices. And uh, after I do that, I'll say printf. 
select number for percent D to exit. And the percent D will be where we'll put in the the game exit. And that's what we'll print for our menu. So now when I run this, we see our menu choices, select the number or minus one to exit. Alright. Now I'll go ahead, I think I'll comment this out so you'll know we did it like this. Click on run. Notice how it's working correctly. And also, one convention some developers use, and you can see why they do it, they always put a comma at the end of everything in an array. And see, even by putting this comma here, we still get that we only have three entries. And it actually prevents this error of if in the future you add additional items, you've already got your comma there. So I see that a lot, and it's kind of one of those tricks you pick up when you're writing a lot of code. So here we've got our menu choices, right, 0, 1, 2, or we can exit, and, that, and that's what our display menu choice. Now for getting our menu choice, we could say, uh, we could say, uh, well, let's have an integer uh, choice. Now the scope of this is this is local scope. In other words, this variable, this choice variable only exists inside this function. So I'll say scan f percent d and point to choice. So there it will it will read our choice in. And uh, once we get our choice, now instead of putting the game exit here, right, since this is cool, get our menu choice. Here we no longer have to hard code it because we'll just come around and get the choice and only if we say game exit. Which means inside our play, once we get here, we need to say we need to handle the choice. Right? We need to handle if it's if it's the game exit, we're gonna break out of there. Otherwise, we'll say do a switch based on the choice. And if the choice is zero, right, based on this, we need to do one thing versus the other. So instead of putting that here, for now I'm just gonna say put string to do uh, handle game. All right. You can see I try to do as little as possible <laughs> each each step, do as little as possible, and then try it out. So right now it says, well, first we got a warning. It says control reaches, and sure enough, we see we were supposed to return this choice. So what I should have done is say return choice. And you see by just running it a little at a time, you can only focus on one thing. So it said, you know, at, at play.c, line 30, you were returning. You were not returning. So we, we did not have this line. I had left that out. So now we'll run it again. I'll click on stop. Click on run. Let's suppose I choose zero. To do handle game. Suppose I choose one. To do handle game. Suppose I choose, uh, here it says minus one to exit. So if I say minus one, cool. We exit. All right. So this is a good stopping point for, for this one. Notice how we've now got our menu choices and we can actually select a menu choice. So as always, get your code running uh, and matching what I've got here. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.